Hey guys, and welcome to a really random video. Um, I know I don't make much uh, videos anymore, and that's mainly because I'm really uh, busy and with school. So I hope you understand that. But last Friday, I went to the theater and saw Skyfall. And I'm not making a review. I haven't written a script or anything. I'm I'm actually just sitting here and just telling you my thoughts on Skyfall and and the previous Bond films. So let's talk about Daniel Craig because I have a lot to say about him. There are some mixed opinions about him. Uh something something's uh, well um some people say he's uh, more brutal than the other Bonds, and I would I would agree at that. Yeah, uh, he is really brutal, but in a realistic way. Um, in my opinion, he is by far um, the most realistic Bond in the whole series. He brings more. Um, feelings into the movies he's as I said much more realistic he's more like a human being and not like an uh, mastermind unstoppable action hero uh, he he get hurt and he care about people even though he still he still has an ego that's just huge but he he shows emotions and that's what I think Daniel Craig uh, really shines in the Bond series because he really stands out from the others because he he shows very much emotion and and that is um, that is probably one of the reasons why he's so brutal. Um, the last Bond film before Daniel Craig's was. Die Another Day. Now, many people hate that movie. Um, and yeah, it's not a very good movie. I grew up with it, and of course I really liked it. But over the years, as I've got, gotten older, um, and then I see it, and it doesn't hold up very well. Uh, the villain is weak, the, the plot is cliche and boring, and... It was too much. It was too science fiction and too much CGI, and that could have just ended the whole Bond series. Really, it could be. It, it could have been the last Bond film forever, because it really shattered the whole series. Because it was just so unoriginal and boring. And I really like Pierce Brosnan. He's actually one of my favorite Bonds. He was really cool, but. He he just got worse in each movie. I, I don't mean the actor got worse, but his movies got worse. Like, he started off with Goldeneye, which was a brilliant film. And then uh, The World's Not Enough, which was... It was okay. Tomorrow Never Dies, which I actually thought was pretty good. And then Die Another Day, which wasn't that good. And so the, uh, the series could have been completely uh, you know ended but um some um years later we got casino royale now most people most people who know about james bond or seen a james bond movie have seen casino royale uh and now i'm thinking about the younger uh viewers uh this generation uh, of uh, viewers um, who liked Casino Royale but didn't really get why and I'll just tell you why Casino Royale uh, took Bond to a whole nother, another level um, Gone was the cliche villains who want to either destroy the world or take over the world uh, there were no uh, Russians or um, or uh, North Koreans or anything like that. Um, it's actually just a business guy, and it's all about this poker game. 
And it's just a very, very realistic film. And it's also a prequel, which uh, I th a lot of people uh, don't know about, because in the beginning of Casino Royale, uh, Daniel Craig uh, get his uh, uh, Dovenal, um Award or promotion, um, uh, because you just have to kill two people, and you'll get promoted as uh, a double O agent. Uh, so James Bond becomes 007, and he's on his first mission to um, uh, get this uh, uh, the main villain uh, Le Chief, I think his name was, and he also meet this uh, woman who's called Wesper, and this becomes a really big part of the film, actually the heart of the film, because Wesper does something uh, to Bond uh, that have never happened to other uh, other that has never happened to other uh, women he's met. Uh, he actually becomes in love with her. You know, you know Bond has met thousands of women, and you know had uh, sex with them and stuff like that. You know he gets all women's, but Wesper. Um, isn't that kind of woman. He actually gets in love with her. It's just something really special. And that's where Casino Royale really shines. It's a completely different Bond movie. It actually could have taken away the, the James Bond stuff and called something else. But calling James Bond is a really, um, I would say, um, uh, a really badass move. I would say, and um, a smart way, uh, a really smart move, because we need to get away from the science fiction stuff, we need to get a real hero, not an action hero, or something like that, we need to get a real hero, or not even a hero, an anti-hero, really, and just do what he feels is necessary, well, he just do, do his job, he don't care about people, you know, and it's just so realistic and it was so good the action was fantastic I I will always remember the chase scene in the beginning of the movie uh, that was amazing it was shot very well and believe it or not it was directed by Martin Campbell and Martin Campbell directed uh, probably people know about this one and it's Green Lantern which uh, it wasn't that great but he has Casino Royale, which is definitely, definitely his masterpiece. And people love Casino Royale. Uh, some people would go as far as say it's the best Bond film. And I wouldn't disagree. I, I wouldn't disagree at all. It really is a revolutionary film in the Bond series. It just took Bond to a whole, a whole nother level. And... It just forgot about the other Bond films. And like, all right, let's start a new Diner Day, shatter the series. Let's start a new with a more realistic tone and something that the audience might feel it's fresh. And it was a bold, it was a bold move, and it really worked. It was brilliant. So the Casino Royale was a big hit. So they of course had had to make a sequel. And it was Quantum Solace. So it went from the best Bond film ever to the worst. Well, I wouldn't say the worst, but it it's... Comparing to Casino Royale, it's not very good. The, the action scenes are good. They're really good. The chase scenes are good. But I, I don't like the editing. The editing is rough. And compared to Casino Royale, Casino Royale was really smooth and you saw what was happening. Casino Royale went to, I mean, Chrono Solis went more like a, a Jason Bourne style and stuff, uh, and I didn't like it at all. Now, the story to Chrono Solis, um, you know what, I can't explain it. I actually don't know what the movie was about, and I actually read on IMDb that they actually they actually wrote the script why they were filming while they were filming the movie so they weren't done with the script 
or I think they were done, but they they uh, wrote new things to the movie while they were filming. I'm not sure what it was, but they were s- still writing the movie while they were filming it. So, uh, so and that you know, before you make a movie, you have to have everything ready: a location, script, actors, everything. Everything have to be in place before you start filming. But they didn't do that, so it becomes a mess, and you really see it in the movie. It's just confusing, and it's just a really letdown, because Casino Royale was so good that when you come to Quantum Solace, it just goes downhill, because it's not what you expect. You know, you see the trailers, it looks freaking awesome, but then you look at the movie, and it's nothing special. It's just really disappointing, and people still hate it at this day. They still hate it. I wouldn't say I hate it, but it's still confusing and I I would say boring. It's not very entertaining because there's action scenes every five minutes and the editing is really rough and it's hard to see what ha- what's happening. That's just me, but there are some scenes that's really good. I love the ending. The ending was really good. But the one thing that makes the movie awkward is that it's a, a sequel to Casino Royale. Now, most of the Bond films, well, the Bond series, you know, they're sequels, but they don't really uh, reference every, anything from the last movie. Um, you know, in the Sean Connery films, you have Spectre as the main evil organization in his series, and you see them over and over again, but they don't really reference anything from the movies before. And But Quantum Solace is like a direct sequel to Casino Royale, because it begins right where Casino Royale ended. Which could have been great, but it just didn't work because Casino Royale had such a great story and great characters that when you come to Crown of Solace, it's a confusing story and you don't really get much invested with James Bond. He just do stuff and that's about it. In Casino Royale, you really got into what he feels and and actually who he really is. And Crown of Souls was just a letdown, and it could have been a great film, but they just, they rushed it. Because Casino Royale was such a big hit that the studio was immediately, oh, we have to make a sequel and make more money. And they just rough it, r- rush it, and it, it, it becomes a mess. So, we've been waiting four years, four years for a new sequel. And... When I first heard it, that they were going to make a new sequel, I was like, oh, okay. But then I heard Sam Mendes was going to make it. And I was like, holy shit, Sam Mendes? And, and some of you might know, some of you might know him, and some of you might not. Now, Sam Mendes is uh, most, um, uh, most recognized for uh, his big Oscar winning uh, film American Beauty um, American Beauty is um, a great film um, mainly because it's a, ver- a very unique story and it has a lot of different characters and it, it, the movie itself looks really good and that's what I really like about Sam and his films is that he his uh, camera moves and the cinematography it, it's he makes beautiful films they're beautiful so when I heard he was going to make Skyfall I was like oh my god this is going to be awesome and when I first heard the title Skyfall I was even more pumped because just the title Skyfall it sounds really cool so um, I started to get interesting I I got 
um, curious in this. But then when the trailer just came, I was blown away. You know, first they got my curiosity, then they got me my attention. You see? Django Unchained, yeah. I'm also looking forward to that film. But, um, yes, back to Skyfall. Um, yeah, so, um, uh, I, 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 yeah, uh, so yeah, Skyfall, and one of the big things in James Bond films is having a good villain. That's another thing that Queen of Souls didn't have, a villain. Uh, Dominic Green, I think his name was, he was a really lame villain, to be honest. Um, he wasn't... There wasn't anything evil about him, and he didn't scare me, or anything like that. He didn't, he didn't feel menacing or anything, and he didn't feel like uh, much of a threat to James Bond. Uh, but in Skyfall, we get the ultimate villain, and to be honest, I would go as far as say that it's my favorite Bond villain of all time. Javier Bardem plays a bad guy named Sylvia, and he was a double O agent in MI6 before. But something happened, and M, played by Judy Dench, uh, left him to die. So Sylvia comes back to take revenge. Now, it might it might um, seem very simple. It's it's an reven revenge film, I would say. It really is, but there's so much going on in Skyfall that it, it's just it's it's just really good. Um, it, it it's hard for me to talk about how the script really, but. Um, all right, let's just get to the point here. Um, I was blown away by Skyfall. Casino Royale was great, but Skyfall was even better. Some people might disagree, but I was blown away by Skyfall, and it's actually one of my favorite Bond films. Uh, probably right behind Goldfinger and From Russia With Love. Skyfall was just amazing. Um... As I said, Salmon is, is really good at giving giving the audience like get the audience invested in his characters, and um, you get invested with James Bond, but you really get invested with M, who never really have been in the light in uh, the seven Bond films she's been in. Uh, you know she was in the Pierce Brosnan uh, films. Uh, she was just there giving orders to um, to Bond. Uh, I think it was the world is not enough. Uh, there were some things with them, but in Skyfall, you really get to know her more as a, a character, and you really start to care for her. and And the relationship with James Bond and M is one of the most unusual but very unique and great um, relationships I've ever seen. Uh, not in a love kind of way, that, that would be weird, but um, as, you know, James Bond becomes more and more, he have to protect her from, you know, Sylvia and stuff, and you just really get invested with her, her character, and you start to care for her, which is hard to believe, but it's true. Now, so the characters are really good. The villain, the villain doesn't ap appear in the movie before uh, half halfway through the film, but I I think it was a good thing because building up to a villain like that is it's smart because if you see the villain already in the beginning of the movie, you know he's there. You know he's going to appear in the movie uh, later but if you don't get the villain before halfway through the first halfway through of the film you're wondering 
uh, well, where's the villain? Uh, is he going to appear soon? So you never know when he appears. Which I think is really good. And when he does appear... Um, it's just really awesome. Because that scene was very... It was very effective. Because Bond was uh, trapped in his chair in this uh, long like hole. You know, and, and the camera is... You see, like, the camera from the perspective of James Bond. And he look down the hole and the elevator. And you see the elevator go down and stops, you know, at the bottom. And the doors open. And you see Sylvia. And, um, you know, you see the blonde hair and, and his dress. And he just walks slowly towards the camera. And talking, and you can't see him clearly yet. But then he he starts to reveal himself, and you just you just feel just that scene, that shot, just makes the villain look very menacing, and it makes the audience feel uh, really frightened by this guy, you know, because you feel that you're such. A distance from this character, from this villain, that if you do something wrong, he might just get you. It's well, it's kind of hard to explain, but um, just a shot was just really good, and it's one of the best introduction for a villain ever. Um, but he's a really awkward villain too because he. Well, it's kind of hard to explain, but you might know what I'm talking about if you have seen the movie. Um, but yeah, um, so Sylvia appears uh, at times. He just appears in the movie, and uh, there are some things that is um, it's very Dark Knight-ish. If you know what I mean. And Sam has actually said in an interview that he was very, um... Uh, he was, uh, very, um... Well, he had seen A Dark Knight, and... He, he, he was, um... Inspired by The Dark Knight. Uh, I think that's what he said. And you, you can cl clearly see that in the movie, because there are some things that, um similar to the dark knight uh but i i wouldn't say that's uh s just stealing i i wouldn't say it's stealing i i would say um it's clever filmmaking i would actually say because the dark knight is a fantastic film and very underrated around hollywood and stuff uh, for us audience it's a, a very overrated film but like in hollywood and the Oscars and stuff like that. It's a really underrated film, man. It, it's a fantastic... It's a masterpiece. And The Dark Knight is a film that should be shown in film schools and stuff. And actually learn from it. But uh, let's uh, not get into The Dark Knight right now. But yeah, Skyfall. Um, now, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, because there are some big surprises in the movie. Very big surprises. And it's, um, even though it goes back to the tra traditional Bond, um, it still have the, um, realistic tone of Casino Royale. And it's, if you remove Quantum Solace, Skyfall would be a perfect sequel to... Uh, Casino Royale but of course it isn't now so yeah um, there's much more to say about Skyfall but one thing I also really like that they used the Bond theme more because in Casino Royale they didn't use it at all uh, not before at the very end then the Bond theme came but um, other than that we haven't really got the Bond theme but in Skyfall uh, we do get it at times, and it's, uh, it's, um, you get a good feeling, you feel like you're watching a Bond film, and not, um, a random action film, um, so, 
Would I recommend Skyfall to non-Bond fans? Yes, I would. It's a really good story, great characters, fantastic cinematography, and it has some great shots. Um, so if you're a, a film buff, definitely see Skyfall. If you're just a regular, regular viewer um, and you want to get some action, yes, see Skyfall. You, you'll enjoy it. Um, and if you're a Bond fan, will you like it? Yes. I've been a Bond fan since I was a little kid. My father, he used to watch uh, Sean Connery and Roger Moore films when he was young. And, you know, when I was a kid, he was always talking about James Bond and stuff. And when I got a little bit older, like around 6 to 8, uh, he he uh, bought some DVDs to me and I started to watch James Bond and I loved it. Uh, and the first Bond film I ever saw was Goldfinger and then Thunderbolt and then You Only Live Twice. So I started with the Sean Connery films. And I've seen almost every Bond film. And I love it. I loved it as a kid. And I love it now. And seeing Skyfall was... It gave me flashbacks to my youth. Um, when I watched, you know, the Bond films. And I just got a really nostalgic feeling. Uh, watching Skyfall and a good feeling and I got the feeling that wow I'm actually seeing a Bond film on the big screen and it's good it's a good Bond film so it was fantastic uh, it was an experience uh, I, I can't explain it really it was it was really special for me um, so yeah I, I would recommend it for anyone um, everybody should see this movie I uh, I uh, it does get a little bit slow at parts it's actually the longest Bond film of all of them it's uh, two two and a half hour long which is a lot but it's worth it um, but yeah some parts do get a little slow but um, other than that it, it's a fantastic film I, I loved it and I highly recommend it so, since it's the end of 50th anniversary of James Bond, what James Bond films are you going to watch? Are you going to watch the Sean Connery films, or Roger Moore, or Timothy Dalton, or Daniel Craig, or are you going to watch Skyfall? And if you have seen Skyfall, please comment down below and tell me what did you think of it. And if you're disagreeing with me, great. I want I want a big conversation about James Bond here, so please, let's talk about Bond here, alright? Let's do it. So yeah, please comment and we'll talk about Bond. Alright, so I hope you enjoy enjoyed, and yeah, this video is a very long, but maybe you liked it anyway. I hope so. Alright, I'll see you later. Goodbye.